Hong Kong is completely back, and not just back, it is better than ever. Art Basel Hong Kong staged its largest fair since the pandemic with 177 galleries from around the world. During COVID, what was most frustrating was unable to see everyone in person. Art Basel was really a shadow of its former self. This year, we are all feeling so positive. Nearly all attendees were mask-free, shaking hands and enjoying champagne stations after nearly three years of COVID hibernation. The industry is betting big on the return of wealthy mainland collectors, the main target audience of the fair, as China reopened borders. Well, this year we're extremely excited. Uh, everyone is asking for VIP passes and they are asking for PDF and acquiring works. Throughout the lockdown, well, I actually think it was a really a uh, great time for artists to reset and rethink what Hong Kong means to them. With the reopening of Hong Kong, that's very exciting to be able to provide them a platform and connect them again with the international community. The whole razzmatazz about the Art Basel Hong Kong has encouraged some really serious collectors to actually get on a plane. And a lot of people wanted to come to Hong Kong. China is incredibly important to us. All the collectors from mainland China that we expect to be here are here. And in addition, we have the curators, we have the critics, we have the artists. Clearly, there's been some roller coaster events going on that have made it difficult. Obviously, access to the Chinese market has been pretty well impossible. And now it's, it's freeing up. It's much easier to do business again. Chinese collectors account for the world's highest share of spending at the $1 million level, and their median expenditure is the highest globally at $475,000 for a piece of work, according to a joint report by Art Basel and UBS. Greater China now is probably the second biggest art market in the world. It covered about 20% of all transaction activity that occurred globally. It could not be more important. We are accessing that both here and across the whole region. We're in eight different cities across the whole of Asia. We are focused at the moment on the opening of these headquarters here. This for us is a platform that allows us to really, on the doorstep of mainland China. Philips is not the only global auction house to expand its presence in Hong Kong. Christie's is planning to open a new 50,000 square foot hub and Sotheby's will open new spaces totaling 60,000 square feet in 2024. I think that the investment and these huge buildings that are going up and the infrastructure and, and shipping lack of tax on art makes Hong Kong the natural place to buy your art. The hub is here in Hong Kong. Local art communities are hoping to grow a sustainable art ecosystem. I think every great city besides having a very successful commercial art scene and finance and all that, it's also really important to have very strong heritage and have a very vibrant arts and culture scene. So Hong Kong has really wonderful, amazing local talents. I think with more dialogue and with more perspectives that are outside of Hong Kong looking in, I think there will be a lot of new views that will be formed and hopefully those will be positive ones. On the first day of the fair, International Gallery Hauser & Worth sold Mark Bradford's work for $3.5 million to a collection in Asia. And David Zwarner sold Elizabeth Payton's painting for $2.2 million and Jordan Wolfson's sculpture for $900,000, both to major museums in Asia and Shanghai. Hong Kong continues to be the premier art market hub for Asia, and our expectations are high. Years of strict COVID restrictions have helped places like Singapore and Seoul take a bite of Asia's luxury and art market. But Hong Kong may be getting another chance.